Hey, what's going on guys? Check it out. We're back at it again with a very simple exercise. You might think it's not that simple, but once you slow it down, you'll get the concept and I'll show you the formula of how it works. So let's jump right into it. So as you guys saw in the beginning, I played it a little bit faster so you guys can hear what it sounds like in context. So I sped up the BPM a little bit. Uh, that was 220, but I'm playing eighth notes. And then I slowed it down again at 100 beats per minute and I play that in eighth notes. So just to get a feel for it, I wanted you guys to see how it sounds slowed down and sped up at the same time. So you can slow it down even more if you want to, if that's comfortable for you. I'm sure if you're first starting this exercise, it's a little bit of a brain teaser because you're used to playing uh, the major scale or the modes. And keep in mind, you should know the modes pretty well, uh, especially in the key of C major. That's what I did this uh, exercise in uh, to be able to go up and down. Now there's an exercise called the best melodic exercise It's taking the arpeggios of each mode, the Ionian, Dorian, uh, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, and Locrian and playing them ascending and descending arpeggios. <laughs> one note wrong there but anyway you guys get the idea so you need to know your modes up and down the scale as well in order to execute this exercise effectively so now let me give you the formula because I'm using on every single mode or every single scale that I shift up I'm using the same exact formula and I'm not going outside of that so what I'm doing is you want to think of this more as a third finger fourth finger exercise or if you if you have problems with your ring finger or your pinky to strengthen them this is a great dexterity exercise for these two fingers i mean once you do this several times you'll definitely feel the burn so the formula here we go so we have a uh, root note we're playing and then we're playing the octave so so one octave seven octave right get that in your head first right skip down to the sixth scale degree and then walk it down until you get to the second note of the major scale which is that D in the key of C majors so for number wise uh, I'm just gonna call the octave eight for now so we have one eight seven eight six five four three two now that's where you start your next formula or your next scale or your next exercise you're just moving this up you're moving it up diatonically I didn't want to do the same thing yeah I'm, I'm, I've been playing this exercise for so long it's hard for me to do it chromatically so I'm just playing that same thing uh, chromatically going up a half step I didn't want to use that same exact thing I wanted to use it diatonically so we can melodically Im implement this exercise into our playing uh, and a as you see, or as you guys can hear, it sounds pretty pleasing. It sounds really nice being able to go up the fretboard doing the same formula. And you guys can switch this up as much as you want to as well. I mean, you can play and skip the five. You know, that's what I'm doing. I mean, it's very minute ex changes like that to this exercise that you can make it your own and uh, challenge yourself. This happened to be tough for me when I created this exercise uh, a while back. Uh, but now it's, it's actually pretty simple. But you can say the same thing in a minute. But anyway, so let's go back. We got one, eight, seven, eight, six, five, four, three, two. All right, now we're moving up. Okay, we're moving up diatonically. We're going to the Dorian scale. The same exact formula, but we're using the notes of the scale. That, that flat seven in the major six or the uh, natural six. Going down the Dorian scale. Okay, so with this exercise, I wanted to, fingering wise, I wanted to be able to challenge myself as well. I always crack my knuckles. Sorry about that, guys. You probably can hear it in the microphone. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to challenge myself with my fingering. So I wanted to do instead of instead of playing that minor third of the Dorian scale, I wanted to play that F down here on the second fret. So the fingering would look like this. And now I have to shift up. I shift up to the E, the Phrygian scale. And remember what that Phrygian scale is. Sorry. So this we got one octave of this scale, one eight seven eight six five. Oh, wrong note. Sorry, I'm thinking about the major. <laughs> 
okay? So I'm using it, I'm doing it almost as uh, fingering the same as the Dorian. Except for that natural six there. Okay, see what I mean? That flat six on the Phrygian. Or the minor six. And walk it down until you get to the next note, until you get to the F. Okay, so just remember that formula. I'll write it up here on the screen. So we got one, eight, seven, eight, six, five, four, three, boom. Start the next one. Okay, so the timing. Boom. One, eight, seven, eight, six, five, four, three, boom. Dun, dun, dun. Start the same thing over again. Okay, so let's slow that down. Let's do it. Let's try it again. That, uh, uh, that was almost the perfect speed, what I just did. Um, but anyway, that's 70 beats per minute if you guys are interested. Uh, and I would recommend, please always use a metronome. Very helpful um, so you can track your progress. I always say um, you don't know where you started or you don't know what your progress is. And some uh, some reasons or uh, why that people get you know frustrated with their progress or I, I don't think I'm getting any better. I don't think I'm getting any quicker. I don't think I'm getting any more efficient uh, is because you don't track your progress. Or one of the great ways to do that is using a metronome when you're practicing exercises like this um, to see if you're getting it clean um, to speed it up just a little bit so you can get it as clean as you got it when you slowed it down in the beginning or the slowest pace so you can see where you end up. So this is 70, the next week you might be at 85, the next week you might be at 95, you know, so you see what I mean? So you can track your progress like that and trust me, it helps a lot and I'm just using my phone here as a metronome. So we're doing 70 beeps per minute, let's start that. Um, I'm just gonna do the first two, so we got boom. <laughs> see that shift the most important thing is the shift because with this exercise um, finger wise uh, positioning it really doesn't you know fall right into place like it you know nicely or as nice as it could you know you have to shift you have to make these weird shifts but that's all a part of knowing your modes as well as you you know you can please learn these modes up and down so you can just burn them in your brain also you can hear these uh by ear once you play these modes over and over again you can hear diatonically how it's supposed to sound or if i play a wrong note so you know something was wrong about that one so one of the notes was wrong so you can actually hear and ingrain this entire sound of these modes as a collective unit but anyway so let's keep going we did E, we did Phrygian, right? And then the next one, we're going to shift and start with our second finger. And I'll have this tab in this PDF written out for you guys so you can see the fret numbers exactly where the fingering is supposed to go as well. So, so when I shift up for this, uh, for the F, I'm using the Lydian. Same formula. I'm shifting up with the second finger again so I can start that Mixolydian. That flat seven. Um, and then I shift up with my second finger again with the A Aeolian because of the fingering. So watch this. See that move? I'm barring that with that same exact fret on the 12th fret with my second finger. I'm playing that G, that flat seven for the Aeolian scale. And that's just a quick way, a nice little trick that you can takes a little bit of time to get used to that uh, but once you get used to it you'll trust me I'm, I'm you'll use it so much more often and then the last one the Logan now with this one you got to be careful because it has a flat five and flat seven and flat three right so make sure you're playing that F so you can use the same formula as a minor as a minor scale so we got two four two four one walk it down same exact but here you're shifting down a half step here to the f and then using the major the rest of the locrian scale all these natural notes okay and then you're done so one more time uh let's play with the metronome two three and you can slow this down guys if you need to please and if you have any questions Write them in the comment section below. Make sure your notes are coming out clean, clear, and precise. 
and I'll get back to you as soon as I can if you have any questions about this particular exercise. Be on the lookout for a lot more exercises like this. It's a whole arsenal that I have ready for you guys for all levels. Uh, if you want to speed this up and make it a little bit more advanced or even go backwards with it, we'll talk about that uh, at a later date as well. I think for right now, this is a, a good amount of information or a good amount of uh, exercise that you guys can, you know, um, add to your repertoire, right? So here we go. One. you want to do at the end of that is fine <laughs> so that is the exercise I don't even know what to call it uh, I'll figure out a name for it but uh, this is actually a pretty intense exercise and you see that back and forth movement or that rocking that four three four three you're really utilizing your fourth finger and your third finger so you really can't get away uh, with using three fingers with this exercise so this kind of forces you to be able to uh, implement that fourth excuse me that fourth finger inside of your playing and I think that's one of the most crucial uh, the most important, one of the most important fingers that you can use, um, and it's, it's, it, it can be so weak at first, but you have to just work that much harder to strengthen it, okay? So, um, and if you see me play anytime, I, you see me play with my fourth finger all the time because I, I recognize that at a early age and early stage of my playing. But anyway, make sure you know, so come on out clean, clear, and precise, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.